Hello and welcome to EGM 702, Photogrammetry and Advanced Image Analysis. This is Week 2, Part 2, Topographic Analysis. So one of the things that we can do with a DEM is derive topographic attributes. So these are the parameters that we can derive from the surface. For example, this is the slope or the aspect, the curvature, or even something called hypsometry, which is just the distribution of area as a function of altitude. So a DEM represents something that we are presuming is a continuous surface. So we can think of this as being the elevation z is some function of x and y. This surface in practice is discrete. So rather than having a continuous surface that we can keep getting smaller and smaller pieces of, we're using a discrete surface represented most often by a raster. So we can think about this in a number of different ways. For example, we can think of this as being each pixel has a value and it is basically just a bar in space with a certain height. We can also think about it as a series of linearly interpolated surfaces that pass at the center of each pixel that pass through the height value of the pixel. Or we can think about it as a series of interpolated higher order polynomial functions for each cell. These different surfaces all have mathematical derivatives. For example, we can think of the slope as being the first derivative of the surface. The curvature is the second derivative. And we usually don't work with higher order derivatives than that, but you certainly could try. To take derivatives, normally we use a three by three window around each pixel. Now this is how it's normally done in most of the software packages that you'll encounter. This is not necessarily a universal way of doing it, so make sure that you're double checking what each software package is doing in order to you know, understand what it is that you're working with. But if we look at this three by three grid, it's centered around a center pixel, which is labeled Z5 here. And each of the different cells has a width of what I'm calling L here. And as I said, different algorithms are going to use different approximations for the derivatives. So if we look at the slope, for example, which is also just the gradient of the surface, or the rate of change of elevation, this is the first derivative, and it can be approximated in a few different ways. One of the more common ones that you might run into is something called the D8 method, where we use the eight cells surrounding the center cell to actually calculate the slope. And it's taken as the maximum drop in elevation, so it's the maximum of the difference between the center cell and the uh, surrounding cells, divided by the length of the cell, and then multiplied either by one or the square root of two, depending on whether we're going uh, along the straight lines or along the diagonal of the grid. Again, this gives us the steepest downhill slope to the neighboring pixels, but it also gives us normally slightly lower values than other methods because the steepest downhill slope is not necessarily the steepest slope. We can also use a finite difference approximation. This is the one that is used by ArcMap, for example. And this is just taking the difference in the x direction, where we average the different pixels that are to the right of our center cell and the left of our center cell. And you see that there's different weights here depending on whether the cell is on the diagonal or straight across. And then we divide by eight times the length of our pixels because we have eight different cells that we're averaging over. We have the same thing going for the y direction, and the slope is then the square root of the magnitude or the norm of the z, the, the first derivative in the x direction, the first derivative in the y direction, each of these squared. This 
approach for calculating uh, slope or calculating gradient is something that we're also going to see when we start looking at different image filters because this is equivalent to something called the Sobel filter. And we'll talk more about that next week. Another thing that we can derive with the first derivative is something called the aspect or the slope aspect. This is just the orientation of the slope with respect to some, uh, some zero value. So if we are thinking about this in terms of a map, we usually have the slope ranging from values of 0 to 360, where 0 and 360 both represent due north, 180 represents due south, 90 is east, 270 is west. You get the idea. Normally, you would calculate the aspect of some slope as just the inverse tangent of the y component divided by the opposite of the x component. Um, but because we are interested in taking these reckoned from due north, we usually do some kind of transformation to make sure that 0 and 360 are at north, and then the values increase going clockwise around the compass. This is something that is very useful for different modeling um, approaches that we might encounter in environmental or geosciences. Uh, for example, it's quite useful for hydrology, also modeling things like solar illumination. Um, so this is something that you might encounter uh, more frequently than not. And we'll actually talk a little bit more about using aspect to help co-register DEMs at the end of the lessons for this week. The second derivative of the surface is something called curvature. And this is the rate of change of the slope. This is also a line that is made by intersecting some plane. So we can have a plane that is horizontal to the surface, vertical to the surface, uh, intersects the surface at some angle, and also that is tangent to the surface. And that leads us nicely into the different types of curvature that we might encounter. So profile curvature is just the profile that is made by intersecting a plane that is oriented to the vertical. Plane curvature is just also called the contour curvature because it takes the contour uh, or it takes the curvature along some topographic contour. So it's horizontal to the um, to the surface. Tangential to the surface is where we calculate the curvature at some point um, along some plane that is only touching the surface in one location. And we can also think about something called the total curvature, which is just the, the actual curvature of the surface in all of these different directions. So as I've said, curvature is a second derivative. We can calculate the total curvature of the surface as the sum of the different uh, second derivatives. So it's the square of the uh, x derivative, the, the second x derivative, the square of each of the x y derivatives multiplied by 2, and the square of the uh, second y derivative as well. These local different, this, this total curvature actually highlights local differences. Uh, and the reason for this is because of the way that we are discretizing a continuous surface. And this is something that can be quite useful for finding errors in DEMs. So if you look at this hill shade here, um, you can see that we have uh, some fairly smooth, um, low slope glacier surfaces. We have some mountains that are sticking through the, the ice in different locations that have much uh, higher slopes. And if we look then at the curvature, we see that we have uh, ranging from the sort of magenta and purple colors uh, is areas of low curvature. And then in areas of high curvature where we see the mountain slopes, we see that we have much higher curvature uh, represented by the yellow values here. So one thing to keep in mind through all of this is that elevation is a continuous surface. This is the assumption that we're making, and we're representing it as discrete points. So what that looks like in practice 
if we have our black line representing slope here, we have our dotted black line representing one pixel, our dotted blue line representing a second pixel, and you can see that the slope value for these different pixels is usually the elevation at the center of the pixel. However, you will also notice that the actual surface has quite a bit of variation within each of these different pixels. And so when we are using interpolation methods that are not suited for continuous data, and I'm specifically calling out nearest neighbor interpolation with this, what this means is that when we do our interpolation, it's going to take this center value even if the center of the pixel moves to say here or here or here, depending on which pixel we're looking at. And so what that, what that ends up doing is it introduces these sort of step changes in our surface that are artifacts of the interpolation. They're not, they're not real. And you can see this if you look at the total curvature. So I've zoomed in on an area from the previous slide and you can see this very clear regular grid pattern that I assure you does not exist in reality. Um, and this is, this is something that happens because we have done uh, nearest, neighbor, nearest neighbor interpolation on our DEM. Um, so that shows up as, again, this sort of regular grid pattern. You can see some other artifacts of interpolation as well. Um, so looking at the curvature can be very useful for figuring out uh, what errors or what artifacts might be, uh, might be lurking in a DEM that you don't necessarily see from just looking at the elevation values. So to sum all of this up, uh, we are assuming most of the time that the DEMs that we're using represent a continuous surface, which means we need to be very careful when we are interpolating. We can derive different parameters and attributes from our DEMs that we use in further analysis or further study, including things like slope and aspect, which again is the first derivative of the elevation surface and the direction of that um, first derivative or that gradient, and also the curvature or the second derivative of the surface, which we can calculate in a number of different ways. I have a couple of additional resources here. The first is a sort of a classic paper from Zevenbergen and Thorne uh, that looks at a couple of algorithms for estimating the slope and aspect and curvature of elevation surfaces. And then the other place that you can go look um, to, to learn a little bit more about this is with the surface tool set from the uh, ArcGIS software. Um, you can look also, there's, I should have included the link for, let's say the QGIS software or GRASS or something. Um, I'll make sure to include that in, um, I'll make sure to include that on Blackboard when I upload this. Okay. So that's all for this lesson. I hope you found it interesting, and if you have any questions, please be sure to post them in the discussion forum on Blackboard. Thanks. Bye.